Hi, I'm the Windmaker today. Finally, after more than a month waiting for my roof tiles, I finally got them. That means that now I can finish my carport. The last time you saw me working on my carport, I was nailing the planks on the roof. But it was not totally finished. The next day, Daniel came to help and together we finished nailing the roof planks. We have to use super long clamps to put the planks together. On the last row, I'm forced to make a lot of custom cuts. When I'm done, we can put them in place, just here. The light colored wood is an angle strip that we nail over the wall plate. We just have to put the last screw in place. Now that all the wood is nailed to the roof, it's time to cut it to size. Okay, on the other side, I cut it from the top. It's much easier. Now it's time to install the membrane. It's self-adhesive, so we simply have to put it in place. I know, it's a shame to cover all this nice wood, but as a consolation prize, we'll be able to see it from the ground. Sticking this membrane on is quite easy. We lay it in place and remove the plastic film that protects the underneath of the membrane. And that's it. We do this for the whole roof. Now that the roof is covered, we take a small vacation at the cottage. I'm telling you, it's quite restful over there. No cars or airplane making noise. But when we're back, it's time to close this side with some lattice. First thing to do is to cut a groove in the center of four two by fours. Then I trace the shape of the concrete post and cut it. <laughs> yes, I made a test cut before. Then we can put the base plate in place. Next, one side, but I need to make a small tenon at each end. With a tenon, it will hold in place pretty well, but this piece uh, needs to touch the post. I mark what needs to be removed and remove it. Perfect. I need to take care of the top now. Another success. But I still have one other side to make. and the one between the lattices also. Then we cut the lattices. I try to check my cut, but I notice pretty quickly that with nothing fixed in place, it's impossible. I decide to screw everything in place.
when both sides are screwed, I drill some holes on the bottom 2x4 between the concrete tiles. To prevent the bottom from moving, I drive some threaded rods in the ground. The first thing to do is to cut three lengths about 18 inches long. Then with a nut threaded at one end, I pound the rods between two tiles. And now we're finally ready to put the lattice in place. First the small one, then the big one. Now it's time to connect both of them with a 2x4. The last piece goes on top. Last thing to do is to screw it in place. Now it's time to do all those steps for the other side. But this side will be much simpler because it doesn't go all the way. That's because René dreams of buying a lawnmower robot. Just like the ones we saw in our European trips. And this will be where it will be parked. But this won't be before several years, that's for sure. Doing this side is fairly similar to the other side. But it doesn't start well. The concrete goes up near the post. This needs to be fixed. And after planing it, the rest goes like a charm. One thing is a bit different. I need to cut one to by four at the same angle as the roof. On this side, the base plate will be screwed to the concrete. And now everything goes by itself. It's the first time I've worked with lattice. It's not that complicated to put in place. And it looks great. But I noticed that it can deform easily, so I had to be careful. All the visible screws are in stainless steel. I should have used this instead of nails on the exterior siding of the shop. And after a long month and a half, we finally received the material for the roof we ordered. The roof will be just like the one for the shop. Metal shingles. The first thing to do is to install the eave starter. And now it's time to remove the layer protection from the membrane we unkept at the beginning of the roof. Next, the J-trim on the side of the roof. And finally, the first row of tiles. The last tile needs to be cut. And then René and I screw the complete first row. And the second. Putting down the metal roof, it's not that difficult. See, I'm now doing it alone. But it's quite long. Especially at the end of a row, when I have to cut the last one. But when I'm near the wall, it's even longer. I'm even forced to use a smaller screw gun. But that's nothing compared to the final row, where I need to cut each tile in half and drill holes before screwing them in place. If only it was just that. I'm missing two tiles. 
I don't want to buy a full 28 tile box for only two tiles. And that's not counting the month and a half of waiting for the delivery. So I'll use one of my cutoffs to make the missing tiles. After the first fold at 90 degrees, I use a metal ruler to keep a gap for the second fold. My new tiles are a bit harder to install, but it's almost unnoticeable that those are not from the factory. But even if the last row is all screwed to the roof, I'm not done yet. I need to screw a starter hook so the end wall flashing will be able to hold to something. And they also need to be cut to the roof angle. Before going any further, we check if the angle is okay. And since it is, I put a bit of caulking on the wall and we're ready to screw it in place. The first one is the small one at the center. Then both ends. Ah, it's super simple. You just screw them to the wall. The last thing to do is to install the gable cap. I cut one end to the roof's angle. We measure its length and it's back to the saw. Then it's as simple as sliding it in place and screwing it. I use three screws. And with this last screw, our carport is finished. The roof is super slick. I'm happy with our work. In fact, I'm pretty pleased with the overall aspect of our carport. But it's time to talk about my mistakes and things I would do differently now. First of all, my concrete posts are in line, but not at the right distance from the shop's wall. This means that the roof's overhang is not the same all the way. But like Jean-Marc told me, heh, nobody can see that from the cycling path. I guess you remember that I've bolted the anchors with two bolts. Paralia. The first post is crooked. It was too late to fix it when I noticed it. I'm ticked off. But again, from the bike path, Everything looks great. I also could have cut the anchors differently. Oh yes, when Evolution Tool send me their saw, they also send those samples so I can cut different materials and in the box, there was this metal pipe. I told myself, if this saw can cut this, it could probably have cut my metal plates. I'm going to try it. But I'm super happy with the wood. Thanks to Goodfellow who provided me with the terra treated wood. I will probably never have any trouble with this carport. And on top of it, it looks great. This was my new carport at the back of the shop. I would have liked that both parts would be closer to each other, but the roof delayed us. But nonetheless, Come back again for the next episode of The Woodpecker.